Hey, after watching this video, check out the new PhoneDog.com homepage and play the One Pod Bandit for your chance to win free phones. As a piece of hardware, it's pretty nice. Uh, the capacitive touchscreen works pretty well. It's a little bit smaller than the screen, say, on the HTC Hero. Uh, and I mentioned the Hero because my two favorite Android phones right now are the Click and the Hero. That may well change when the Moto Droid comes out, uh, just because of the specs, you know, that I've seen and everything. But in any case, you know, the Click and the Hero, the two that I'm thinking about right now. The screen's a little bit smaller, um, but then you do get the keyboard. So, you know, you have the benefit of when you're typing in widescreen mode, none of your screen's being taken up by the keyboard. Uh, so if we go to text, and we start a new text message, then you've got, you know, you know the keyboard might be really awesome. After using it for several days, it, it's so-so. It is actually a little bit on the small side. At first, I was like, oh, it's not too bad. But having used it, it the keys are a little bit small, a little bit cramped. I love that there's a D-pad. Um, as more games get released for Android, and there are a bunch out already, but, you know, having uh, reviewed some games recently on iPhone, I really miss having, you know, button controls on the iPhone, iPod Touch platform for gaming, especially sports games and action games. So having a D-pad on this phone uh, is, is pretty great. Otherwise, the keyboard's pretty good. I kind of wish the comma button was down on the bottom, a couple little things like that. And again, the keys are a little on the small side. But generally, you know, it, the keys themselves are fine. It's a little cramped. But it's nice having the keyboard. And then if you go into, uh, you know, into landscape mode, you get the, um, the touch-sensitive keyboard there, and you can turn on haptic feedback, and you have the nice Android um, predictive text system, and you can add stuff to your own custom dictionary, which you can't really do so easily on, say, an iPhone. And, you know, that's kind of nice. So the hardware's pretty good. No multi-touch support on this phone, which is too bad. Again, the capacitive touch... Generally works pretty well. A little bit of a lag depending on how many widgets you have and how, many, how much stuff's going on. I think that's more a function of the processor than the screen itself. But the screen is good. It's very sharp. It's very easy to read. It's pretty bright and uh, works pretty well. You've got three buttons here on the bottom, the menu button, the home button, the back button. Uh, on the side, you've got a rocker switch. You've got, you know, a switch here that um, turns the ringer on and off. On the other side... And you've got a USB port on this side as well. On the other side, you've got two buttons with little labels that are kind of hidden underneath. They're kind of hard to see, but they're sort of hidden underneath that top layer. So this one is for lock and power. This one's for the camera. On the back, you've got your camera. I'm trying to get out of this home screen. Uh, on the top, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so you can uh, use it with a wired headset. You can use it, you know, stereo headphones and everything. It works well as a music player. Uh, and there you go, my fave support, Wi-Fi, 3G. Call quality was really good, signal strength, you know, depends where you are here in San Francisco, San Francisco Bay Area. In some places it was awesome, in some places it, you know, kind of lacked a little bit, just really depends on where you are. But when I had a good signal, uh, the voice quality was very good. You've got Wi-Fi, you've got 3G, um, I've got some messages, you know, standard Android notification system. Uh, the phone's a little bit heavy, a little bit bulky, a little bit heavy. Uh, it, uh, you know, it, it's a small footprint and then a little bit thick, so it's not too bad, certainly smaller than a sidekick. I've read some reports, talked to some other media type people who've had this phone, because it's not actually out on the market yet, who've had issues with the sliding mechanism, a lot of wobbliness and that kind of stuff. You can see, you know, from here, there's a little bit of wobble in mine, but it's not too bad, and when I'm using the touch screen, it doesn't really move around. And then, you know, when I slide it open and use the keyboard, it doesn't really move around that much. But I have heard some reports that's not so good. But I would say, you know, basically, kind of in a nutshell, I think it's a good Android phone. I think it's the best Android phone with a keyboard in the U.S. market. The keyboard is much better, in my opinion, than the G1. Even though the G1's bigger, this keyboard I personally find much easier to type on. Um, you know, right now, and right now means for the next few weeks, because the Droid is coming out, Right now, I think you'd either want to, if you want Android, you either want to go with this or you want to go with the Hero. And it just depends, you know, do you want something that's a little bit, do you want a hard keyboard or not? The Click, you get a hard keyboard. The Hero, you get a larger screen, a little bit thinner, multi-touch web browsing, which is really nice, multi-touch support on the uh, keyboard, but no hard keyboard. Um, you know, otherwise, 
the Moto Blur versus HTC Sense. It's kind of a, uh, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. I prefer HTC Sense a little bit, but I don't know. The more I use these things, the more I realize, just for me personally, I don't want to see all my Facebook and Twitter updates all the time. But that's just me. You might want to. Uh, otherwise, you know, I think it's a, a nice, the style's nice. Feels pretty good. Again, a little bit heavy and bulky. I said that already. And uh, otherwise, you know, performs well. Battery life is an issue, so just be careful. And if you can, minimize the number of things you're logged into. Uh, Motorola is working on a firmware update. They told me there's nothing specifically addressing battery life in that update, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, otherwise, you know, it, it, it's, again, it's a combination Android smartphone and sort of sidekick on steroids, depending on how you want to look at it. If you're in the market for a sidekick, I would strongly consider the click instead because you get the added benefit of longevity in your investment. You'll be able to install Android apps, and there'll be many more Android apps than there will be Sidekick apps, if not already. Um, if you're in the market for an Android phone, you know, this is, again, the best one with a hard keyboard right now. The Samsung Moment is coming out. The Motorola Droid for Verizon is coming out, but they're not out yet. Uh, if you're in the market for a smartphone, then, you know, you're kind of looking at, well, do you want Android, do you want Palm Web OS, Windows Mobile, Symbian, iPhone, and, and then it's just, a, you know, a whole plethora of choices. Um, all in all, I think it's, you know, a pretty good effort for Motorola and T-Mobile. It's not, you know, the be-all, end-all, anything killer, but it's a solid Android phone. Me, personally, if I was going to buy an Android phone on T-Mobile, I would get this one. I like it better than MyTouch because it has a hard keyboard. I like it better than G1 because it's a little bit smaller, and more importantly, the keyboard, for me, is nicer to use. But, you know, compared to the Sprint Hero, uh, I don't know. It depends on, on what you want to do. If you, if you web browse a lot, you know, the web browser on here is fine, but you don't get multi-touch, um, and, and that's kind of an issue. You know, multi-touch just makes it a little bit easier to use. You get the Telenav GPS. You get MyFav support. Obviously, T-Mobile's... Uh, Rate plans, you know, speak for themselves. You get all the other Android stuff, and the hardware is good. So there you go. I don't know. Hopefully that helps you a little bit in determining, you know, should I check further into the click or not. Also, I'm um, recording this on October 23rd. With, you know, by the time the click comes out in stores, we should know more about T-Mobile's new rate plans, which may well be very attractive, or at least in line with Sprint. Also something to consider. So there you go. Thumbs up. It's got a hard keyboard. Uh, Moto Blur is pretty interesting, and depending on what you want to use, there's some stuff that, I, that you might like about it. I like the messaging widget. I like the RSS widgets. Uh, you know, it, it, it works well. Call quality is good. My favorite support is good. The camera's pretty good. 3.5mm headphone jack. On the negative side, it's a little bit bulky and heavy, and the battery life is uh, not so great. Otherwise, it's up to you. Make your own decision. We'll do some dog fights. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll get you all the info you can, and ultimately you decide. All right? So there you go. It's the Moto Click with Moto Blur from T-Mobile and Motorola. Much, much more on the Moto Click and all the new Android phones, all the new T-Mobile phones, all the new Motorola phones, all the new phones on phonedog.com. And if you're into Android, check out droiddog.com because uh, our own John Walton knows a lot more about Android than I ever will, that's for sure. All right? So until next time, I'm Noah from phonedog.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Have yourselves a lovely day and, you know, be nice because if everybody's happy, then you're happy too.